Father, tonight in the name of Jesus, we just give you all the glory, all the honor, all the praise. That Father God, you come always to minister to your people. As we minister to you, Father, and as we give you, Father, our worship, something of a transaction of a supernatural kind takes place. Tonight, Father, we thank you for heaven in this place. We thank you for the manifestation of your heart in us. In Jesus' precious name, we thank you, Father, tonight for life. Life in abundance to the full till it overflows. Hallelujah. Can you just lift your hands with me tonight? Can you just lift your voices and just audibly give Him praise? Just audibly out of your heart. You can pray in the Spirit. You can give thanks. Come on, just lift your voices. Thank Him for touching you. Thank Him for healing you. Thank Him for saving you. Thank Him for delivering you. Come on, just express our hearts tonight. You're so wonderful, Father. Worthy is your name, Jesus. Serve the praise. Worthy is your name. Come on, sing it with your heart. Worthy is your name. You deserve the praise. Worthy is your name. Worthy is your name. As the Lord refills this place, you alone deserve our praise. You're the name above all names. Be exalted now in the heavens. As the Lord refills this place, you alone deserve our praise. You're the name above all names. a small thing. It's not a small thing when people get together to pray. How many people believe things change when that happens? You see, you can stay in your mind and rummage and think about everything, or you can get praying 
You can get praying in the Spirit. You can get praying, as Jude tells us, that you will what? Build yourself up in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. I love the Amplified Classic Translation. It says this, that you will rise like an edifice higher and higher. You see, something happens when the believer begins to pray. We're not at the mercy of what the world has to take, embrace, receive. Actually, the church, we've been given the authority to do something about what's happening in the world tonight. In this normal, regular, what you would call Tuesday night prayer service, I believe there's something extraordinary, something beyond anything that we could believe, ask, or think can take place. He said, where two or three are, I'm right in the midst of you. He said, if two or three and agree, agree, touching anything on earth, it shall be done. He gave us in Matthew 16, the power to bind what is already bound in heaven and to loose what is already loosed in heaven. In other words, there was no doubt about it that the Father's great plan through the name of Jesus and the operation of the power of attorney with that name, that we were to rule over all. Where do we get that scripture? Psalm 103. His kingdom rules over all. Do you know that not only do we rule over all, but his angels, his angels are hearkening unto the voice of his word. That means that angels tonight are waiting on words that are being spoken by you, words that are being spoken by me. Angels standing ready to minister on behalf of the saints through the words that we begin to speak. Sometimes, you know, it's hard to get our mind wrapped around all of this. But whether we get our minds wrapped around it or not, it is still the truth. There are spiritual happenings and supernatural works that want to take place on behalf of the saints, through the saints, on behalf of the world. See, the world is not just at the mercy of the power of the prince of the air called Satan while the church is here. Because the church is here to pray for the world, to pray to believe just exactly what he said, that I loved everyone so much that I gave my beloved son so that none should perish and all should have everlasting life. You see tonight, ladies and gentlemen, it's just not a simple little thing just to say, I came to a prayer meeting. It's not an ordinary thing just to say, I came to a prayer meeting. It is an extraordinary thing because even in the scriptures, when people got together to pray, tremendous power was made available. And James 5, James 5 reminds us of that, that it's the heartfelt prayers of a righteous man or woman that makes tremendous power available. How many people believe this tonight? So it doesn't matter how we feel or find ourselves. Yes, the empathy is there. Sometimes people go through hard things, sometimes hard situations, horrendous situations. But thank God that we have a word. We have a more sure word of prophecy, the words of Jesus Christ. We have those words that are promises, just like what we sang tonight. They'll never fail. They're yes and they're amen. Over 7,000 of them coming to you and to me. Do we know all of them? No, but he knows. He knows what he promised. And he is faithful to watch over his word to perform it. I believe tonight the change can come in our lives. If you believe that, shout a big amen. I want you to reach across the aisles, take somebody's hand tonight. I want us just to turn our attention to the Lord. Beyond worship now, to the place of prayer. I want you to lift your voice tonight. I don't want you to stay silent. Those that are watching online, we wish you could have been with us tonight. It's so beautiful, so powerful in this place. Such a presence of the Lord in this place. But we know this, that there's no distance in the Spirit. Amen. And that you can receive what the Spirit of God is doing right there in the comfort of your own living room. Amen. Whether you're in Tulsa, Oklahoma, surrounding states, here in the Union, or some other nation in the world, we declare that God is at work right now in the name of Jesus. The only thing we ask is that you would rise right now, change your position all over this room and those that are watching at home by the way of device, your television, on YouTube. Amen, that you change your posture right now. Get up and begin to walk about your living room, 
Walk about your kitchen. Do something different. Lift your voices and begin to speak out tonight in the name of Jesus. Come on, everybody. Let's begin to hear the prayers of the saints tonight. Amen. Allow that to rise within you in the name of Jesus. Don't be afraid of the person beside you. Amen. We're just a bunch of people called the body of Christ. Amen. But we're not ordinary. We are the supernatural bride. Come on. We are the supernatural family of Almighty God. So begin to pour out your heart right now. In the name of Jesus, begin to pour out your heart. Allow the feelings of Kaprosalamaya of the Father's heart to pour through you. In Jesus' precious name. Come on. We glorify Him and magnify Come on, lift up your voices, lift up your hearts, lift up your gates, you age-abiding doors, that the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? Oh, the Lord strong. Come on, it's beautiful. Simbraya somarana manashinamiya solamaya. Sombrio solo veo la salvana sulla mano. Mono je la bene vedi solo mai. Mon je la mano ta bravanaias. No je la mia solo mano ta bravanaias. Mon je la mano solo pa bravanas che la no mai. Mon je la pepe via solo mano solo pa bravanas alla mai. Mon je la pepe via solo mai so mai. Oh, we glorify you. Oh, we magnify you. Simbria manana. Come on, just lift a hand of that person high tonight. Allow healing to flow in this room. Allow healing to flow wherever you are. Come on, the supply of Jesus Christ. Healed in our bodies, whole, delivered, delivered from operations of the demonic. In the name of Jesus, we declare we are free. Free from sickness, disease, and infirmity. Free. Free. so strong is so powerful come on look at this tonight right across this great auditorium oh we give him praise and honor and glory come on guys play those instruments up to the lord tonight worship him in spirit and in truth worship him
Let's just thank you. Just thank you. Thank you. Thank you for miracles. Thank you for signs and wonders. Thank you for supernatural ability. Thank you for a sound mind. Thank you for a healed body. Thank you for long life. Many of you are going to be astonished. Things that you've held out for, believe for, wondering when on earth is this going to happen. But there's something very significant about this time that we're living in. In as much as it seems that the world is groaning for the manifestation of the sons of God, as much as it seems the pressure is coming from all sides, there is that that worketh of the Father for good and not for evil. You see, right at the beginning, he said, choose life. Colossians tells us that the handwriting against us was completely erased as we were transferred out of a world system, out of a fallen, broken system of darkness and the world. And he drew us to himself through Jesus Christ. brought us into a kingdom of light and as I've said to you already it's this kingdom that rules over all but I hear this in my spirit many are going to be astonished of the supernatural acts of God in your life in this year. I hear it. I can see it. For we'll stand in we'll stand stand in of you and I'll stand in. I'll 
Isn't he wonderful?
Say this with me, I fully expect every promise to be a manifestation in my life as I stand in awe of my God, my Father, bringing glory to Jesus. In Jesus' precious name, may I give him thanks right now. Give him thanks right now. Come on, just give him thanks right now. Come on, you're going to be one of those that are going to stand astonished this year. Come on, how many people believe you're going to stand astonished this year? You're the one that's going to stand astonished in the name of Jesus at the goodness of God. Hallelujah! 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 Well, turn around and bless somebody tonight. Hug their necks and you may take your seats. Thank you. Youth, you are dismissed. Praise the Lord to all those that are watching online. Praise the Lord. Amen. Welcome to service one more time. Praise God. What a wonderful moment to be in church service and church tonight. Hallelujah. I want you to go quickly, please, to Colossians chapter 1, verse 12 to 14. Hallelujah. So good to see you. Thank you for coming out. We've been having a wonderful time. Amen. Thank God the cold weather's weather is over. How many people shout amen to that? How many people's glad you don't live in Colorado? <laughs> They say it's beautiful, praise the Lord, amen, but I, I just believe the snow's supposed to be in ski resorts, amen, it's not supposed to be in Tulsa, Oklahoma, <laughs> praise God, but anyway, it was lovely to look at it, but that was all it was worth, praise the Lord, just looking at it, amen, let's go to Colossians 1, I want you to take a look at this very quickly as we receive our tithes and offerings tonight, amen, this is part of our worship unto the Lord, hallelujah, amen, those that are watching online, praise the Lord. You can do diligence from where you are and uh, praise the Lord and make an investment into the kingdom of God. Amen. It's the greatest investment that you could ever make. Praise the Lord because of its eternal worth. Hallelujah. So Colossians 1.12 says this, given thanks to the Father who has qualified and made us fit to share the portion which is the inheritance of the saints, God's holy people in the light. The Father has delivered and drawn us to himself out of the control and the dominion of darkness and has transferred us into the kingdom of his dear Son, of his love, in whom we have our redemption through his blood, which means the forgiveness of our sins. It's so important in days like we're living in, ladies and gentlemen, that you know that you're part of a different system. There's a world system at work. There's the system of this world, mammon, all of those different things. But you were bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ and were transferred into a very, very different system. The operations of the kingdom of God. Matthew 6 tells us that we're to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things, amen, shall be added. Basically what? In verse 32, the things that the Gentiles seek. And so his kingdom is first and foremost. And he says to us, as now you're to put this kingdom of which you were part of, first and foremost, you are to make it the priority. We no longer live under the dominion, the rule, the control or influence of whatever direction the world system is going. So it doesn't matter where this, where this world is going, amen, we're in a completely different trajectory. We may be in the world, but we are not of the world. That's why on a Tuesday night, in a foggy evening like this here, we can come to a place and worship him in spirit and in truth, without shame, with boldness of heart, with boldness of spirit, to know that this is probably the best thing that I could do all day, is to get with the saints and give him all the glory, all the honor. Why? Because something changes in the manifested presence of the Lord. You know, people have told me over the years, but his presence is everywhere, Pastor Paul. And I said, yes, that's the truth. I'm in total agreement with you. But his manifested presence isn't everywhere. It's when you get together with the saints or you get in a time of prayer, you can sense it. How you felt God three hours ago is not how you feel God right now. The presence of God, what was five hours ago when you got up this morning, wasn't the same as your time now that you're having him with him in your prayer time, your private time. 
Then when you come into service like this here, it all changes again because there's a dynamic that is produced because of the saints getting together. You know, you can forgive me for singing this song over and over and over. I think I can nearly hear people saying, does he not know another song? Because I've sang this now for weeks and weeks and weeks. But you know what? I'm not changing the tune because this tune is doing so many wonderful things. There's something on this little chorus right now. Amen. And I'm telling you, why sing something else when God is on that? See, that's the secret to this. Find what God is on and stay on that. Amen. Receive his manifested presence because his presence changes everything. We are now subject to and governed by another economy, another system called the kingdom of God. We have to learn how to operate in these new ways, in this new kingdom, for the responsibility is on us to find out what the word says and then to do it. Yes, we can master this world. We've been given the wisdom to do that. And that is an amazing thing to do. But we must never negate our responsibility to kingdom ways. And that's what I love about the Amplified Classic where it says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his ways of doing and being right. Because there are ways that he wants us to know, ways that he wants us to operate in, that he knows that as spiritual laws, they will bring us the desired end result. You know, you work with the laws, naturally you're gonna be blessed and benefited by the, the, the good of those laws that were set up to keep us safe naturally. You work with them spiritually, you're gonna be benefited from an unseen realm working spiritual laws. Just because you work them and you keep them, you will see the reward of them. I believe it. We are not subject to the times. The times are subject to us. We are subject to the authority of God's word, not the word of this world. We are subject to the authority of God's word, the blood of Jesus and the name of Jesus. I want you to go to John 17, please. Because you know, the world right now is not really a very happy place to be. You can see that it's straining, but scripture has already told us from the book of Romans that what the earth is groaning for the manifestation of the sons of God. Who is that? That's you and that is me. You see, we weren't, weren't born again so that we could just be part of a good church. Come sing a few songs, hear a nice message and go out and you know, do our best. The body of Christ carries the anointing of Almighty God. And we are here, the Bible tells us, out of the book of Thessalonians as the restraining order of the Antichrist. We're not here so that we're just biding time until the rapture, until he takes us out of here when it gets too bad that we can't stay. No, we're here to do a job. We're not here just to fill up time. We're not here just to get married, have babies, live good times, you know, go on vacations, even though that's all wonderful, amen, and we want it all. That's not the very top reason of why we are here. You see, why did God not just extract you at the moment that you received Jesus. It would have been easier. You wouldn't have been left at the mercy of some of the things that we're at the mercy of, right? There was a purpose and a reason for him for you to stay here. You must never forget that. You're not here just to endure hard times. You're not here just to work through a heavy load. You're not here just to exist under a tormenting, you know, season or a tormenting time in this world. You're here to make a change. And you are here to bring the kingdom of God and to allow the kingdom of God to operate in and through you. I want you to lift your hand and say, that's me right there. And that's why in this church, if you're visiting tonight, we put such a premium on the word and put such premium on worship and put such premium on prayer. You can't go very far in this work without finding somebody that's praying. Why? because prayer is what makes the difference. It changes everything. Why sit and worry about something when you can pray about it? Why sit and think about things you know when you can go to the Word and find out what He knows? Because what He knows is what you need to know. Amen, and we need to know what He knows regarding our finances. Can I have a big amen? 
So in John 17, look at this in verse 13, and we'll read together. And now I'm coming to you, and I say these things while I am still in the world, so that my joy may be made full and complete and perfect in them, and that they may experience my delight fulfilled in them, that my enjoyment may be perfected in their own souls, and that they may have my gladness within them filling their hearts. I have given and delivered to them your word, your message, and the world has hated them because they are not of this world, do not belong to this world, just as I am not of this world. I do not ask that you will take them out of the world, but that you will keep and protect them from the evil one. I'd like you to take your pen and underline that or highlight that in your device. Take a highlighter out tonight or do something and highlight that in your Bible. This is a powerful, powerful uh, prayer. Verse 16 says this, they are not of this world, worldly belonging to the world, just as I am not of this world. Sanctify them, purify, consecrate, separate them for yourself, make them holy by truth. Your word is truth. This is a powerful prayer that is being prayed for each and every one of us. And you can hear the heart here that we are to be protected. I want you to shout that out. We are to be protected. You see, in verse 14, it tells us clearly that we are not of this world system. In verse 15, it tells us clearly that we are to be kept from this world's evil. In Matthew 6, 13, it says, Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. It leaves us with no doubt the heart of the Father. In Galatians 1, 4, it says, Who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us. Everybody say that. Deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of God and our Father. In 2 Peter 1, 4 in the Amplified, it says this, By means of these precious promises, he has bestowed on us his precious and exceedingly great promises so that through them you may escape. Everybody say that with me. I may escape by flight from the moral decay, the rottenness and corruption that is in the world because of covetousness, lust and greed and become sharers and partakers of the divine nature. That's what we're talking about, the will and the purpose of God. I declare it in the name of Jesus. About two days ago, I was praying for you all, amen, and I heard this come out of my spirit, they will not be contaminated. I want you to lift your hands and say that I will not be contaminated. I know this is really wild tonight, but just work with me in the name of Jesus, because this is the power of prayer. You know, when you pray in the spirit, you pray in other tongues, periodically you'll hear words come up out of you that you recognize and you understand and you know that is what you're praying about. How many people's ever had that happen to you? And so this was exactly this when I was praying about, and I heard, you know, they will not be contaminated. I declared over you that no matter what's going on in the world, we will not be contaminated by it. We have the blood of Jesus pled over our lives. We plead the blood over our eyes, over our ears, over our hearts in the name of Jesus. I want you to shout it out again. I will not be contaminated. Does this world system want to affect us? Does it want to infect us? Does it want to contaminate? Does it want to mess with our hardware? Absolutely. But greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Why? Because the first part of the beautiful scripture is this. Ye are of God, little children. I am born again of the spirit of God. I am part of the kingdom of God. I'm not part of this world system. What's fallen apart in the heathen is not is not, is truly, is not my portion. 
I am born again. I have been transferred into the kingdom of his dear son and his love. I am a child of the light. Come on, everybody. Amen. I want to shout it out again. Come on, everybody. Amen. Don't rummage in your mind. Don't worry about what's going on. Don't be listening to the news. You know, maybe people didn't come to church tonight because you're so focused on what's happening up in New Hampshire. Amen. This is not what's happening in New Hampshire. This is what's happening in heaven, ladies and gentlemen, because heaven is invading this earth in the name of Jesus. Amen. I'm not being flippant. I'm being serious. Amen. Because there's a focus that the church has to get. Worrying about this country is not going to make this country better. Went quiet in this Presbyterian assembly. In John 5:18, it says, The wicked one does not touch him. I want you to lift your hands and say that the wicked one cannot touch me. How many people believe that? This is what scripture says. In verse 16, it says, We are as separated from this world system as Jesus is. In verse 17, it says, we are to be sanctified, separated, and cut away from them, from the world, through his word. And in Malachi 3.11, it says that tithers and sowers have a covenant of protection from what's going on in this world. God will rebuke the devourer. I want you to shout it out. The devourer is being rebuked. Come on, say it like you mean it. The devourer is being rebuked. Woo, I sense that in my spirit. The devourer is being rebuked. And so I've known this for many, many years. I have tithers rights. Amen. And I operate in those tithers rights. And just as these things that I'm telling you tonight are pure, lovely, of a good report, of which Philippians 4 says that we are to think on these things. In other words, we're not supposed to think on lack and insufficiency. We're not supposed to think on poverty. We're not supposed to think less. We're supposed to think on things which are lovely, of a good report. We're supposed to think on the Father's report. When Jesus needed something sorted financially, he didn't fall apart, wring his hands, and start to worry. He didn't haul the disciples into a room and say, guys, you know what? They're needing, they're, we, we need to pay the taxes and something miraculous has to happen today. He didn't start a big fuss. He just simply said, Peter, you're good at fishing. Go catch a fish and in the fish's mouth, there will be money. Take that money and sort the bill while I focus on the ministry. I want you to lift your hands and say, I'm getting my focus right now. This is not being flippant. But you know what the enemy would love to do is for you to get so focused on what's wrong, what you don't have, what you need. I don't have a house. I need a house. I'm only renting. Oh, my God. After all this time, I'm only renting. Oh, my God. I'm, oh, my, oh, my God. And what the enemy does by that and by our own desires. Why do I bring our own desires into it? Because Mark 4 clearly tells us that there are five bombs that the enemy will try to use to blow your world apart. It's the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, the lusts of other things, persecution and affliction. Do you know the enemy can get you into a state, the spirit of this world can get you into a state of getting your focus completely all wrong by you looking at what you don't have. By this age of my life, I should have this, I should have that, I should have the other thing. I could say that too at this stage of my life. We should be doing this, we should be doing that, we should be doing the other thing. But you know, after 50 something years, I have learned that if God had done some of the things that I wanted them to do when I thought they should have been done, it would have been worse for me. Because what God's working at is he's working at everything in its time. Lift your hands and receive that right now. Everything in its time. Say that with me, everything in its time. Say it one more time, everything 
in its time. I sense the Lord on us. Say it again. Everything in its time. I mean, the beautiful story about Pastors Mark and Cynthia. You know, I've seen the things that they have done. We've known them now for many, many, many years. Amen. And I've seen how they have given and been a little bit like nomads over the years. And, you know, been here, went there, you know, give just so much into Ireland, you know, slept in somebody else's house. Amen. Went to Australia, poured their hearts into Australia, slept in somebody's house. And then the Lord brings them back to the United States of America. And we find them in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And not only do we find them in Tulsa, Oklahoma, we find them here with us. Praise the Lord. Uh, millennial. Come on, don't you love them tonight? Amen. Well, in about three days' time, amen, after living in somebody else's house right here in Tulsa, Oklahoma, thank God for good people, allowing people to live in their homes. They are moving into their beautiful new home. Hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord praise. Come on, everybody, give the Lord praise. Isn't it so wonderful? I mean, we rejoice. Isn't it amazing? It's so amazing. You did this for the Lord. You did this for the Lord. You did that for the Lord. And I'm sure there were days, maybe just a moment, Lord. I would just love my own closet to hang my own clothes in. Well, they're in a stage now of bringing things out of storage, bringing things out of closets. We brought stuff back for them that was in storage in Dublin. Amen. Just there when we came back. Why? Because they're going to move all their stuff into their brand new home. <laughs> Come on, rejoice tonight. Rejoice tonight. Rejoice tonight. Rejoice tonight. Rejoice tonight. He's so wonderful. Oh, stand and give him praise and honor and glory. Stand and magnify his holy name. Come on, he's so wonderful. Isn't he wonderful? He's so wonderful. Father, as we stand to your feet tonight, we know that the prophetic word that was given by your prophet in 2010, that everything is gonna be all right. We receive it tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, as you stand on your feet tonight, as we prepare to give unto the Lord, I want you to hear again from Mark chapter 10, that none has given up. I was speaking to Pastor Mark's sweet mother at the airport just before we flew back in Dublin the other morning. And I'm telling you the tears in her eyes. She leant over and don't tell her I didn't do it, but I just couldn't bring myself to do it because I don't think that I would suit a beard rash. <laughs> but she leant over and kissed me on the cheek and she says, would you give that to my son for me? I looked at her and said, oh, yes, <laughs> forgive me. I lied. I, I lied. I mean, I, I, I just couldn't bring myself to do it. Praise the Lord. <laughs> but there's a mother in Dublin. in her later years. She says to me, I don't know why I'm crying. It's basically only you that are flying. But it's because she was so filled with love, gratitude for what God is doing in her son and in her daughter-in-law. And even though I said to her this, I said, you wish you was here? Yeah, but I know he has to be there. And that is what makes this all the more precious. It's because none will give up land and house, mother, father, family, that they won't receive in this day. 
in this time, scripture says, a hundred times as much. So let's receive this tonight. In Jesus' precious name. Whatever is going on in your life, know that you've been separated unto God. Knowing that you've been brought out of the kingdom of darkness, you're not under that system. But you're under a better covenant, Hebrews tells us. Under a better system, a greater kingdom. In this kingdom, there is no end. No end. And his ways are perfect. And his ways are just. So if you ever thought, Father, it's time for a manifestation of harvest, get ready. Because God is not mocked. That whatever a man sows, that and only that shall he reap. And the Bible says that when you sow in tears, you will reap in joy. Get ready for the mother load, ladies and gentlemen. Come on, get ready for the mother load. I believe it with all my heart that the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. And one translation says that it will eventually find its ways into our hand.